It's hot and muggy here in the southern mountains of Appalachia. Matt and I have come outside to see what we can do today. You can probably hear the weed eater. He's already started. I'm going to get a weed eater and start, and then we've got to mow, and then we've got tons of stuff that needs to be done, but the first priority will be harvesting. We've got to do our harvest. This has been a really busy week for us, and we've not had time to check on everything. I know we've got beans. Surely the beans from last week are ready to pick today the bush beans so we'll definitely be harvesting some of them i know there's tomatoes that need to be picked i did run outside and make a quick go through last night and got a, a little gallon bucket full of cucumbers so they're starting to come in so lots to do on this hot day in appalachia bees are really working. This is our volunteer pumpkin. You can see growing down there. It's just growing out of the compost pile. Looks like it's going to be a pretty good one though if something doesn't happen to it. We've still been enjoying all the Tommy Toes, yard snacks, as Matt calls them. It is nice to be able to grab one when you're out here working or just walking by. In this bed, we've got lots of blooms. You can see this color there, then also that darker color. Really pretty. So these are lima beans and butter beans here, two different varieties. I'm really excited about them. And I can see right there's our first, first ones. They're just little, but I'm hopeful that'll grow into some big old beans and we'll mm -hmm. be able to enjoy them. Oh, Matt's giving me a, a little tomato. Is this one of the pear shaped ones? No. Oh, this is just no, one. No, these no, are no. one of the Dave and Carol ones. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm really excited about the peas on this end. We ain't got no blooms yet, but there's some buds. This is the Holstein pea from, from Debbie at Bryson Farm Supply. So I just can't wait to see what it looks like and see how we like it. This is still the best watermelon plant we've got on the place. It's actually about two, two or three watermelon plants, but I think feeding it the bone meal and then also the chicken compost really helped it because it's grew even larger and it's beginning to set bloom so hopefully we'll have some watermelons I'm gonna hold the bucket this bush cucumber has took over and when that happens it's hard to see the see ones before they get too big. We're lucky though. Of course the big ones are edible. They're just not as good as those little ones, especially if you're making, well, it depends on what kind of cucumber you're making. Cause remember Betty Jean taught me to make cucumber relish from the really, really big ones. Anyway, I was gonna say either way, our chickens love cucumbers. I just splice them, slice them down the middle and lay them out and they peck them till they're clean. Get bit. Yeah, good place to get bit, Matt said. This is the best our bush cucumbers have done in literal years. And I think it's because they're in this raised bed with all that great dirt. Yeah. Hard to... Kind of 
Matt's continuing to enjoy his tomato sandwiches. He's eating them pretty much every day. Living on them. Living on, living on tomato sandwiches. We've been sharing some with Granny and sharing some with uh, Corey and Austin, of course, and with some other people. What I ought to do is go in there and make mayonnaise for the first time. So many people told us if we tried making our own mayonnaise, it would be so much better. We'd never go back. But I've just not been able to have time to do it yet. But people also tell me it doesn't take very long. I agree. That's exactly what you should be doing. Like we're going to be canning tomatoes. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be canning tomatoes. Cause I don't think you can eat that many. I might surprise you. You might. So here's a good example of one. Matt got it even though it's got that bad place. So if we do, and we will, we won't let these go to waste, can them, we would just cut that place out and save the rest of the tomato. That's the thing about growing your own food. You find out it doesn't all look perfect. There's blemishes. There's those weird ones that, uh, like that first one Matt picked, that kind of look like they're uh, too fused together or something like that. And that happens very often with, especially with heirlooms like Cherokee purples. Not a bad haul from one bed have the Cherokee purples mostly, a few cream and sausage. And then those yellow ones, I got mixed up last time and said they were from Satterfields. And then I started thinking, no, we we grew a, a yellow variety from Debbie from Bryson Farm Supply. And that's actually what these are, is Caney Fork is the name of them. And they're good. We've been eating them too. We've had several of them so far. Our tomatoes down here are about played out. We are still getting a few from them though. And we never did manage to bring some suckers down here and plant them. We never got that done. So this just may be all we have this year. At least from this patch, those Cherokee purple will keep producing. What's soon going to be keeping us busy is picking beans. You can see our rattlesnake beans are beginning to produce there. They're looking really good. We're picking our first beans today. We're gonna to have our first mess of beans. These are our bush beans, and we planted Yonce beans, which is a really old variety, and then also a variety from that Debbie at Bryson Farm Supply shared with us. She got the seed, her and her husband got the seed from Joanne Sutton, and they called it the Daz bean. I think that might've been Joanne's nickname. So most of the Yonce beans we're gonna let go to seed since we've about lost our seed for that, that old variety. But Matt is picking some of them there. And then we're gonna pick the Daz beans they are ready to. In my last garden tour, I talked about how I wondered if the Yonce bean, that's the Yonce bean, you can see it's a fairly, fairly large bean there, if it was gonna be the same as the other one because it's from the same general area but you can see it is not. You can see it's a much, well, if I could get the beans out of the way or the bean leaves, much smaller bean. Let me get one and compare them. So this one is the Yonce bean and this is the Daz bean. You can see, or it may be hard to show up on camera, but this one has got a great old big bean in it, inside it, and this one's much smaller. You can see kind of the little indentations there. So I don't think it's the same variety. The 
hot enough for you? Hot enough to move before daylight. I think this is the hottest I've been all summer. It's so humid today. Mm. I forgot how good the suntan lotion ones are. They're good. Here's the spot. Mm -hmm. I'll eat it fast. Yeah, it'll be melting on my hands. Nice to have our first beans. We gonna cook them tonight, tomorrow. I don't know. Or would you like me to cook them? Sure, you cook them. We're gonna eat with them. I don't know. Or are you gonna make me go hmm. with them? I'm buy some country ham and cornbread. Mm. And some good. tomatoes and cucumbers. Mm -hmm. Or some fried squash. Yeah, we got any squash? Only because somebody give us some. That'd be good. Our squash and zucchini look horrible. It's not doing no good. We've had that trouble before. Yeah. Some and, then, and in some years it just puts out like crazy. Right. I don't get it. I told Matt I thought I'd take some seeds, squash, and zucchini because there's still time. Take them and put them in some of those raised beds where we didn't put anything and see if we can grow any up there because I don't think ours are going to make it much, if any. Although we're getting a lot of good stuff other than the squash and zucchini from the garden. We'll have okri in a, in a week, too, because we've got blooms. We'll have to pick all of our rattlesnake beans are going to start coming in in the next day or two. Probably just in another day or so, we'll be picking them. Yep, and then we'll be canning. We've got our cabbage to worry about and our potatoes to worry about. kind of feel like our garden's getting away from us. I usually feel like that though at some point during the summer, just when you've got so much stuff coming in and you're trying to preserve it all. So I know it'll all be alright. I think it's just worse this year because of our hectic life that we've had this year with Miss Cindy. Getting sick and passing away. Yep. <clears throat> we got kind of behind before we got started. Mm -hmm. But it's working out. Yeah. And the busyness of the cookbook, which has all been good, been wonderful, but that's added, I'm sure, to our. Lack of time. You need to get started writing another one. Mm -hmm. Me and Jim's talked about writing another one. What about a cookbook? Kind of a cookbook, but also just about the 
more of a think about the connection between the people of Appalachia and the land. So think about focusing on stories, but also there be recipes in there, but more like, you know, talking about tomatoes and how, you know, tips about growing them or things like that. Not really a gardening book, but not really a um, cookbook, but kind of just that important role that the earth plays, the good land, ever good earth, ever how you want to say it, living close to the land plays in the mountains of Appalachia and has for, you know, generations. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see. Kind of like we we felt like after the funeral and everything with Miss Cindy, that was like okay, we can catch our breath and <coughs> and things will get back to normal slowly, you know. But we'll get back to normal. There's still a ton of stuff we need to do. Like we've not, you know, we got to make all the decisions about her house and the stuff that's in it and all that. But still, kind of felt like okay, we can breathe now and things are gonna kind of even out. And then this past week, we got some bad news about Granny. So it's kind of like we went from world, one whirlwind of, especially with the girls, they feel like they've lost one grandmother and now the other grandmother's sick. And it's just, and we don't know for sure. We don't have any details to share with you other than Granny's been not feeling well for several months and kind of battling an um, a infection that they thought they was taking care of. And then now it looks like it turns out it's going to be that it's, something else much much more serious we have an appointment this week so after that we'll know more but kind of feels like I don't know like oh goodness how could this happen so soon after Miss Cindy mm -hmm. but Granny's in good spirits and was feeling really good this morning she said feeling much better so that was that was great uh, someone said, you know, one of the times we were talking about Miss Cindy, but also about Granny's garden, they wasn't sure. They were like, it was that Miss Cindy's garden. Is that why it wasn't doing good, you know, because she was sick? I said, well, no, actually, it was Granny's garden. Um, and explained that, that Miss Cindy was Matt's mother, Granny is my mother. But then after that, I kept thinking about it. I thought, well, you know, Granny's not doing well either. I hadn't, I hadn't shared that with anybody, but she's not doing well either. And is that why her garden's just kind of pitiful and not doing any good? Because she's not felt like going out there and doing anything in it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we will appreciate you praying for Granny, praying for all of us. And hopefully we'll get good news and everything will, you know... It'll, it'll be okay, and they'll figure out a way for Granny to feel better without, you know, something major happening. And we'll just have to see. So I'm tempted to take all these green beans down there and give them to her. Oh, yeah, just because she's so excited about it. Actually, there's more than enough for. That's more than enough for both of us, so mm -hmm. we could both share a share a mess of green beans. I may mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. That'd be fine. Yeah. Oh, I know you and would care. Yeah, she's crazy about green beans. And we did this past week, me and Katie, one of the days we were staying with her, we went back out to her little patch of beans that looked so pitiful and planted, replanted some in between all. Uh, so maybe, and maybe those will grow good. And then someone asked me too, said, did you plant Granny's day garden on the wrong, like plant by the signs the wrong day? And I said, you know, that's a good question. We were so busy with Miss Cindy, it seems like maybe we did just say we have to do it. And, but I'd have to go back to the video and see if I could figure out, and I don't even know if I could, and I've not done that. So that could be a possibility. Or it could be sometimes gardens, just like Matt was talking about with our squash and our zucchini, some years we can't literally use it enough, you know, um, and can't give it away. All those jokes about people giving away their squash and zucchini and uh, hiding it in people's cars at church or leaving it on their doorstep and running, you know, those <laughs> things. And then other years, they don't, they just don't do any good. Yeah, sometimes very next year. You can't grow yeah, one. Yeah, right. And then the year before, you couldn't give it all away. Right. It's crazy. And I have a video where I talk about kind of the way we look at preserving food, thinking about that, and I'll link to that. But that's, again, one of the reasons that sometimes like on those years we have those bumper crops and you know if I shred a lot we don't really can squash or zucchini but shred a lot and put it in the freezer to put in soups and things like that then if the next year is one of those years, years we don't do anything I mean it doesn't do anything for us doesn't grow then we've probably got at least some in the freezer left over mm -hmm. 
um, like this summer I've made no jelly, not one jar of jelly, but last year I made a lot of jelly, so I'm thankful that I've still got jelly, and even if I don't get to make any this year, I think I will though, but even if I don't, I canned a lot of jelly last year, and I made a lot of, I canned a lot of grape juice and blackberry juice, so I could, even in the middle of the winter, make jelly if I wanted to. So, I just didn't get to make any with Miss Cindy being sick and caring for her of any of those spring that type things you think about. So that's one way, that's basically how me and Matt look at the preserving thing. Something else I want to say, oh about tomatoes, so we said we would can those tomatoes. A lot of people have asked us to show how we can tomatoes. That is like such a hot debate uh, among people, just like all canning is. I have a video about that too where I talk about some of those old ways and I didn't even know, I share in that video, that I learned that just this year that those, if you use old methods of canning, that people call you a rebel canner. I'd never <laughs> heard that term before, but it's really common. If you just search rebel canning, you'll find all kinds of stuff about it. So there's people that believe, and, there's, and everybody should believe what they want to believe. I'm not telling anybody what to believe. But there's people that believe you should do exactly what the like the FDA canning guidelines, and you should never stray from that because you're you know you're liable to make yourself sick, kill your family, all those kind of things. And then there's people that grew up in families like me and Matt did, who canned and preserved every year. And so we do it the way they did it, and it's not exactly like what the experts would have you do. But then we're like, well, you know they lived doing it and we lived doing it and nobody's ever got sick and we're okay and of course there's the people who say well you've just been lucky you will get sick and you shouldn't take that chance so that's all you know everybody has to make their own decision about that anyway tomatoes is one of those things that we do the rebel cannon <laughs> so uh, what miss cindy matt's family papa tony granny my mamas my aunts all those people what they would do is they would take their tomatoes and and we don't worry about the seeds and all that we just leave them in we don't care about that now some people do and there's you know canon directions about how to remove the seeds and all that but we don't do that and chop them up put them in a big pot and they make their own juice of course you don't need to add any water and cook them for a while you know 20 30 minutes whatever and get them all real, you know, some tomatoes, those big ones can get kind of hard, so you make sure they're all soft and everything. And then we heat our jars in boiling water, they're piping hot. We heat our rings, even our little taps, we dip in hot water, so they're, or either just put them in hot water, so they're hot. And then put those hot tomatoes with some salt in a jar, put the lid on it, screw it down tight, put it under a towel, and leave it. And that's it. So that's called the open kettle method of canning. And in days gone by, lots of people did that. But now, as I said, canning experts say, do not do that, do not. You run the risk of you know, botulism or whatever it is. So it's another one of those, like I said, you can go down that rabbit hole if you want to have rebel canning and find all kinds of videos of people doing it and saying FDA tells you not to do this but my family did it and I feel comfortable. It's even like with our jellies. I do that same method I just described with all the jelly I make. And again, that's not, you know, you're supposed to, according to FDA, water bath your jelly and we don't do that. But that's where personal, what is it, responsibility, I guess. Mm -hmm. You have to make your decisions for your family, what you think is safe and what's not safe. Now one year, I lost a couple of jars and I made Matt the next summer. Remember, I made you pressure can the tomatoes. Yeah, I don't remember. And I, or maybe we water. I don't remember if we pressure canned or water bath. But Matt didn't like it. But I made him. And and then after that, by the next year, I got over thinking that that's why I lost a few jars. And we just went right back to the open kettle method of canning. And that's what. So. So that's how we can our tomatoes. But you'd have to. Again, do your own research and figure out, you know, do you know that's too big of a risk, I'm never going to do that, or do you want to try it and see, that's just up to your, you know, whatever. And a lot of people say, you'll hear when people are talking about canning tomatoes is, well, they could do that in the old days because the acidic acid level in tomatoes were higher. Well, we're growing those old varieties, that's what we grow. And then some people say, well, you can do that, but you've got to add lemon juice or, you know, something like that. So there's all kinds of information. You just have to Google and research and, and come up with your own 
and as a beginner canner, you know, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with it following those FDA guidelines. Whether you're a beginner canner or you've been doing it for 25 years, I think that's fine. Follow them. Do what you got to do. What works for you and what you feel comfortable. You wouldn't want to can the way, you know, one of those rebel canning things and then worry every time you fed your family. <laughs> I wouldn't. For me, if I was going to be worried about it, I'd be like, I'm just going to do it like they say and then I know it'll be safe. And then I won't have to worry every time I open a jar of tomatoes. So, lots of different ways to look at it, for sure. But that's how, what me and Matt do and what Granny did and my mama and Miss Cindy and her mother and <clears throat> Papa Tony and his mother and... So, oh, and speaking of tomatoes, I was going to show you. I've got, as you know, Matt knows well that I've got mixed up on all of our tomatoes. Yeah. So I was saying that this one, you can kind of see what it looks like. No, I was saying that this one, this I'm already getting mixed up. This one, this yellow one, is growing over there behind the Cherokee purple. That it was, I thought it was from the Satterfields farm, but then I realized, no, it's the Caney Fork is the name of it. And it was a seed that Debbie shared with us from Bryson Farm Supply. But this one is the one from Satterfields. And it's really produced good, hasn't it? Produced real good. Yeah, and it's tasty, it's nice. Mm -hmm. And I remember Betty telling me that it was really one they liked a lot, so. Yeah, so we're excited. Those, especially this one, probably be one that we we start growing. You think? No, oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. I'm so, tempted to eat that one right now. <laughs> Matt, are you hungry? Gosh, yeah, I'm hungry. You starving? All I fed Matt this morning was an egg sandwich. I'm always hungry. You've already come unfed. <clears throat> come unfed once again. Yeah. I stayed that way. Well, when you work hard, you expend a lot of energy. I guess. You've got to. I thought I had a tapeworm. <laughs> You've got a tapeworm. You just work really hard. Yep. And if you work hard, you gotta have, you gotta fill your tank. Yep. Your tank's empty. Yep. Got to have a big slab of red meat. Mm. Cooked on wood coals, that's what I'd like to have. Yeah, I'd like to go on a camping trip or something. Sit by the water and let you fix me a, something like that. <clears throat> we'll put this stuff up and we'll go. <laughs> we go. It looks like we got some tomatoes to can, some green beans to do something with. Mm -hmm. I want to make some pickles. I don't know if I need to check my supply of 14-day pickles, and that may be something I don't do this year. If we, I can't remember how many we've eaten or not. But I'm definitely going to make some of the ones we learned how to make from Justin Metcalf. Gosh, yeah. You need to make all them. I'm going to make made. as many jars as I can of them. them. Good. They are so good. Yep. And, and we all equally love them. So, best ones. Best, as far as a dill pickle, best ever. That old recipe that handed it down in his, his family. Yeah, it was his way his mother made them, and I, I don't remember. I'd have to go back and watch the video if he if he says in there that maybe his grandmother did too, or maybe he didn't know where his mother, but she had always made them. Well, she done that right because yeah. that is good stuff. And it's so easy. Again, it's <laughs> if you're going to go buy the FDA stuff, you might not like it, but you can go. I'll link to I've linked to it several times, but I'll link to it again to Justin's video. And I'm going to make them, so I'll probably share the video of that. I'll probably share the first time I make them and and link to him and talk about maybe about that how it's not a you know FDA approved. One thing is you can do too, though, if you're really worried about, you know, whether you water bath or pressure can, if you think you've got to do that or feel like you should for your family, is like that recipe of his is so simple that you could just make one or two jars, three jars, whatever, mm -hmm. four, and then just put them in your refrigerator and just eat them that way, and then you, you'd feel safe about it, you know, but instead of putting them on the shelf or whatever. Oh. They're tasty though, Gosh, yeah. and they keep their crunch. I've made dill pickles ever since me and Matt's been married, and I've tried all kinds of recipes, and people will be like, you know, use grape leaves, do this, do this to the blossom end, do this, and, and it'll, you know, never, it just ne they just never work. They taste okay, but they just never have that crunch that you want. 
And the only ones that have really come close to the ones that Justin, that recipe, was just the year, like two years before that, I learned a fermenting recipe. So that's what I did. I didn't make a lot, but I made like maybe two, what is that, gallon jars, those old tea mm -hmm. jars, glass ones, um, or pickles, probably come in them. We used to use them for tea or milk. Um, put them in it and do all this, let it ferment and stuff on your counter, and then just put them in the refrigerator. And they were good, mm -hmm. but they wasn't as good as... Now you can open up those good. Like, like he made a, a year later and they're just crunchy as they yeah. was the day you put them in there. And the ones I made, I only made, did I only make four quarts or five quarts? Not many because I, I didn't know if, if we would like them or not, you know, and I thought, well, it's just going to be another recipe that doesn't stay crunchy. Um, but I even used cucumbers that were not at their prime because I was like, well, I just want to get rid of these cucumbers and I've got to put them up and I'm just going to do that recipe and see what happens. And they turned out fantastic. Yeah. Do it again. I'm going to. I need to, like you said, make at least 20 jars or something. Yeah. That could be a good aim, aiming for 20, yeah. 20 quarts. I'm pretty sure we could eat 20 quarts for next summer. Yeah, because if you wait yourself, you could just get one and start, like, eat it for a snack. Yeah. You know. Another thing I think I'm going to do uh, this year we've got to do something with our cabbage we've got to harvest it i would love to do the dig the pit and put it in there and see how it lasts like how they used to keep it in the ground i'd like to try that we're probably not going to do that this year though but i think i'm going to try making kraut like granny does in the jar just because i think i mean i don't know i just want to do at least three or four jars just to know that i i know how to do it and get it down pat you know and we can ferment some too, but. I would like to have a, I, f I was thinking about, we have, a, me and Matt are lucky, we have a refrigerator in our basement, so we can like kind of overflow stuff like that. I just wanna say, I wish we had a big walk-in cooler or something, then you could harvest all the cabbage and just put them in there and, and eat them or take your time making the crowd or whatever you want to do. But I just remembered it. Look, we've got a refrigerator at Miss Cindy's too that's empty. Mm -hmm. So we could put some in there. Yep. And we've got to do our potatoes. And that was another thing that was the, I said I, at the end of one of our videos that we wanted to try the dry canning. And a lot of people said don't that they had tried that and they didn't like it. And then other people said that's the only way to go. So it's just something we want to try. We've only tried canning potatoes. Last year was the first year that we ever canned them. And we sort of did it the way went by the ball canning book, but skipped maybe a step. We didn't cook our potatoes first. Is that what we did? I don't think so. We <clears> soaked <throat> them and tried to get all the starch out and then cooked them. I mean, and didn't cook them and put them in jars. I don't remember what we did. Anyway, we liked it. We did. We liked them. And we ate all of them. They're gone. We ain't got no more. They were real handy to open when you just was in a hurry you know, for supper instead of having to cook the potatoes. But I read so many of those rebel canners talking about how wonderful it was to dry can them that I want to try that. I don't know, may not, we may not like it, maybe a flop. Let's try and see. But we need to harvest our potatoes to see. Yep. We'll do that in the next coming days. Yeah. I was hoping that was on our list for this past week and it didn't happen. So, I do feel like kind of like our garden's going out through there and we're running, trying to chase it, <laughs> chase it down. We've just give up on the on the, weed, the weedy areas. Thankfully, because we used mulch, we did manage to get that. Matt done the lion's share of that. Uh, we've not got many weeds in our actual beds where the stuff's growing, but around the edges, like in my flowers and then mm -hmm. that over there, it's just, just a jungle that probably is not going to get fixed till next year. We'll wait for old man winter to blow it down with his frosty breath mm -hmm. and try again next year. Sad thing is when you're chasing the garden like that, just all of a sudden it quits and it's done and you don't chase no more and then you're out of food. Yeah. Or you're out of fresh food. Yeah, right. You've got all the stuff you picked and yeah. put up. But right. It just seems like you're chasing it and chasing it and then just flip a switch, it's done. Yeah. Turns Overnight. off. Overnight. Yeah. 
Um, one other thing we've been fighting in the garden, not really terribly, but with our cucumbers. Last year, what happened to them towards the end of the summer was the bug got in them. I think it's like a squash bug. That's what it looks like. Looks kind of like a stink bug, mm -hmm. right? So I noticed one or two of them. So what, twice this past week, Matt sprayed them like late in the evening with some neem oil and soap and water. Mm -hmm. But I seen them on there a minute ago. I killed like six. <laughs> So apparently that's not stopping them. We're gonna have to try something else. Yeah. Or maybe just keep doing that. I don't know. Could try a mixture. People tell me they try like a mixture of a bird that landed on our head, um, like garlic and stuff. Maybe we could try that. Mix mm -hmm. up some garlic and whatever and spray on them. I don't know if the bugs would care about that. But but I don't want them to get our cucumbers because I want to make those <laughs> dill pickles. <laughs> yeah, so. I've not seen any on the bush ones, though. Just on these down here. I've not seen any bean bugs yet, but I'm sure we will. We've seen some Japanese beetles, but about the same amount we usually have, and we try to... Mostly scrape them off into some water and feed them to the chickens because they adore them. Mm -hmm. Well, in the life of a gardener or in life in general, that's how things go. But there's been, there was one year that I was sick and the garden was pretty much a flop because Matt was worrying about taking care of everything else. And then I wasn't here to help him. I mean, I was just. I mean, remember that year? So sometimes things like mm -hmm. that happen. Yeah. And then this year with Miss Cindy and now Granny, you know, and then when somebody, somebody you love sick, you're just like, who cares about a tomato? <laughs> you know, yeah. who cares? You want to care, <clears throat> but then you're like, oh, who cares? Who cares? Just want your loved ones to be well. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you said you what was we gonna have for supper? I thought you and Katie is going fishing. <sighs> I don't know. I think she's got big plans of going. I don't know that I'm going. Uh, well, I was gonna say you bring me some fish for supper. Be good. Yeah. I'll make the green beans. You bring the fish. Can't guarantee that though, can you? No. Uh, one other thing I laid out here to show was my one meat beet. This is the one beet we grew. That's, that how su that's how successful we were. One golden beet. That thing's hard to grow. Well, usually, again, we don't. I mean, you've, you've seen how many we've grew before. I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, that was our one beet. So, and I probably planted, I mean, they were short rows, but probably at least five rows of them. And that mm -hmm. was one beet. I think I'm just going to chop it up and eat it with salt. Slice it up and eat it for a snack. Or throw it in with some roasted potatoes or something. But yeah. probably just slice it up and eat it. Our tomatoes are beautiful, though. We can yeah. we can usually grow tomatoes. Well, those down there are not, though. You think, But these up here are. These up here is always done good. Yeah. And the Tommy Toes are doing just wonderful. We've shared those with a lot of people and eat them by the handfuls and still got them coming. These right here beside me and Matt, how tall is that plant? Uh, it's eight or nine feet high. It's, and just keep, just looks like it's just gonna keep on and going. Pretty. So that's typical for a garden though is something does really well and then something not so well. Just about every year. Yeah. We appreciate you stopping by to visit with us on this hot day in southern Appalachia. We're always grateful when you stop by to help us celebrate Appalachia, which is a lot about making a garden to feed your family, whether you're using those Rebel Cannon or doing it the FDA way, and also caring for your family. I'm tired. 
seat was happy. Yeah, and we just had such a busy week. If I wasn't tired, what I should do is go inside and clean my house. Some hazmat people are gonna, what do you call it? Uh, condemn it. Condemn it, yeah, if I don't do something. I'll clean it. No, I don't want you to clean it. Why? I just don't. You're tired too. Yeah, but I ain't so I want tired. you to go fishing with Katie and Matt. You'll have a good time. Oh, girls. Oh, yeah, you'd have fun. You trying to get rid of me? No, I just think it'd be good for you. <laughs> you showing some fish, what it is. Yeah, I want some <laughs> fish. Those were so good that we ate last week. They were good, man. Oh, man. Fresh fish is just as good as the fresh garden stuff. It is, and I like it that way fresh, too. It's yeah. not been frozen or nothing. You just yeah. catch it and cook it and yeah. then eat it. I mean, you know, fresh tenderloin's not bad either. Yeah, it's hard to beat. Yeah, but so. <clears throat> A little bit of legality involved this time of year. Well, yeah, but I'm just thinking more of in the fall when you get but, it. Now they stick their little nose in my garden and it won't be. Yeah. So far we've been golden on that. Mm-hmm. Did we even look at those cucumbers to see if any of them need to be picked? No. Then? Yeah. No. No, we need to do that. Then maybe I can make some pickles. I don't know. Those tomatoes are beautiful. Those Cherokee purple. They sure are. All. Pretty. My goodness, all I've got things. Mm -hmm. If I ever get to where I can't eat them, I'll just, I don't know what I'll ever do. Eat them anyway? Probably. Eat them swell up like a poison pup, I guess. Uh, Austin can't eat them, is that right? Because of the seeds? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I think it's because there's something about the seeds in it. Well, some leaves falling. Yeah. But then you remind yourself, it's, you know, yeah, it's a little early. It's just mid-July, so I'm not well, get backed up about the leaves falling. No, yet. I'm not. I'm just saying that it's this. Well, it's, it's about time. <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I'm just saying that it's that time of year. It's, I'm not trying to say it's October. I'm just trying to say that things are doing their growing and cycle or whatever. Okay. You want some water? Yeah. You want to drink out of me? Think I got cooties? Yeah. Do you I think, probably do. Do you think that stuff helps this morning? That alternative uh, electrolyte drink? I don't think it did. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Did you not? I thought. Yeah, I did. It was way simpler and cheaper. Yeah, and not got near as much crap in it. Yeah. I like to try it with some of my grape juice, my canned grape juice. Right. Thing. It'd be tart because I didn't put no sugar in it, but. I've not checked our grapes down there. They're loaded, they just ain't they turned. turned yeah, which is good. We've got too many other things to worry about. The beans are pretty. Yeah. So I was thinking that those, I don't know if you heard me say that, that one of those, that, that might be, that's a Yonks bean. Might be the same as that other variety mm -hmm. that Debbie shared with us, just because they're from the same general area, but they're not. No, they're smaller bean, no. Much smaller bean. Those get great old big beans, yeah. those yon, well, yon's they're, beans. They're good too. So it's not the same at all. I wondered if it would be. Still got beans from last year. Yeah. Need to be eaten. Well, we have been. Oh, we don't have many from last year. I don't even know if we've got two jars left. Is I just all? thought you was asking for something else. Yeah, we don't have any, I don't think. You can go down there and look, but we about eat them all. Oh, but we're going to have some canning. Yeah, these beans down here, they put out, and they, they're such a big bean, and they put out so good, they, it'll make a lot of jars. 
like, oh, I don't know if Granny feels like it. I could offer to help her, but in a day or two, I should go down there and pick some, like, whatever. I bet I could pick a five-gallon bucket in two days and take them to her. We've not ate all the deer meat like we usually do, but it's because, like, since what, end of March, or, yeah, March, till now, we've just been on such a hamster wheel that we've not had as many. I mean, we've been making, not quick cooking as right, quick and easy stuff, and not, I don't I know, that. which that is easy, but it's just like, it just, well, we've even been easier than that. <laughs> and we've just not cooked on several days and everybody fend for themselves because mm -hmm. doing caring for being a caregiver just takes up all your time yeah kind of robs your appetite too yeah it does makes you not hungry yeah. but right now my appetite ain't robbed so yeah, i know we need to get out of this heat yeah it's it's just, warm Get you something, get you a tomato sandwich. Get me some watermelon. I'm gonna put on a fur coat and go to the top of the ridge and move on see if I can't get a sweat going. That reminds me of Sam saying one time when we was out there and it was cold and he was talking about how cold it was when we come in. He said, I like to be at the top of, what do you say, Hyder Mountain or something? Yeah. Hyder Mountain in a wet sheet. Yeah, an arm <laughs> wedge in each hand. Yeah. He said that ever since I was just being. Has he? Yeah, yeah. same thing. I like to be at the head of higher mountain with a wet sheet. Wrapped in a wet sheet yeah. and an iron wedge in each hand. <laughs> Funny. Yep. All right, let's go figure out where we're going to put the tomatoes and get you a sandwich and get me some watermelon. Yeah, I don't and, know if I can get up. And share these with Granny. Good Lord.